from 1942 to 1944, Anne Frank wrote a diary whilst hiding from the Nazis with her family, and it became the most famous of the many diaries written by Jewish people during the Holocaust. I've left a link in the description to a list of other lesser known Holocaust diaries, but this video will focus on Anne Frank. Despite being remembered for her diaries, other elements of Anne's story, life and afterlife are often given less attention. Anne is known to have survived Auschwitz, using her gregarious nature to obtain extra bread rations for her family, eventually being transported to Bergen-Belsen. She fought strong and hard to stay alive, even telling a fellow campmate that she hoped to turn the diary into a book after the war. Eventually, however, with her sister dying and believing both of her parents to be dead, Anne's drive to survive diminished, and she succumbed to a typhus outbreak, likely in February of 1945, around two months before Bergen-Belsen was liberated. But there is much more to her story than this. Let's look at the first of five little-known facts about Anne Frank. In 2019, some American high schoolers decided it would be a good idea to throw a Nazi-themed party. This led to a private meeting with a Holocaust survivor called Eva Schloss, who eventually left satisfied that she had taught the children a life lesson. Eva Schloss is particularly famous, not just for having survived her time at Auschwitz, but also for being the stepsister of one of the Holocaust's most famous victims, Anne Frank. Eva only became Anne's stepsister after Anne's death, when Anne's father Otto married Eva's mother, Fritzi, in 1953. But Eva had known Anne from when they had lived in Holland. In a 1996 interview, Eva recalls her relationship with the Franks. I wasn't, um, I learned a lot about Anne through Otto because he talked, this was his life. And my mother too, they built up a new life together around Anne really. And um, I learned a lot about her, how she was, which I hadn't really known because I hadn't known her too well in Amsterdam. She was just one of the friends I played with and not one of the best friends because she was already um, a bit more grown up than I. She was interested in film stars and boys already then. And I was just interested in marbles and skipping and things like that. <laughs> like, you know, I didn't, like she started to write her diary and I was hardly reading books at all at that time. Eva Schloss has her own story of survival, and I've linked to a few of her interviews in the description below. But Eva is not the only person to have known Anne well that is still alive. Two of her best friends, Hanley Gosselaar and Jacqueline Van Marsen, are also still alive. And Miep Gies, the woman who helped hide the Frank family, only died in 2010 at the age of 100. Again, interviews with all of those people are in the description, so feel free to check them out. On the 5th of April 1944, Anne made an entry in her diary. Eva's dream is my best fairy tale, and the odd thing is I don't have the faintest idea where it came from. Parts of Katie's life are also good, but as a whole, it's nothing special. I'm my best and harshest critic. I know what's good and what isn't. Unless you write yourself, you can't know how wonderful it is. Anne's fiction is less well known than her diary, but much of it can be read in the book Tales from the Secret Annex, including her unfinished novel, Katie's Life. Anne wished to be a writer, and when she heard over the radio that diaries of wartime experiences would be collected after the war, she began to edit her diary for publication. When Meek Gies gave her father her diaries upon his return from Auschwitz, there were two versions, and he edited out much of the more controversial content, creating a third version. But all three versions are available to read in English, and they are read all over the world, fulfilling Anne's wish when, talking about her desire for a writing career, she wrote, I want to be useful, or bring enjoyment to all people, even those I've never met. I want to go on living even after my death. This is Karl Silberbauer the commander of the 1944 Gestapo raid which saw the arrest of the Frank family. His identity was discovered by the Holocaust survivor and Nazi hunter Simon Weisenthal after a teenage Holocaust denier told him he would believe Anne Frank existed only if the arresting officer admitted it. It took until 1963, but eventually Weisenthal discovered that Silberbauer was working as a policeman on the Vienna police force. For months, Weisenthal was obstructed by the Vienna police as they tried to cover it up, suspending Silberbauer and ordering him to keep his mouth shut. But Silberbauer decided he didn't want to stay quiet, and complained to a colleague who, it turned out, was a member of the Communist Party of Austria. The colleague immediately leaked the identity of Anne Frank's arresting officer to the media, who quickly arrived at his home. Silberbauer had no remorse though, chuckling at his joke that he could have been the first to read the diary if he'd just picked it up off the floor. After the disciplinary hearing by the Vienna police, and the intervention of Otto Frank, Silberbauer was exonerated and allowed to return to his job as a police officer. 
In 1940, Juanita Wagner, an American schoolgirl from Iowa, was given the chance to correspond with an international pen pal. The name she drew was Anne Frank, and she soon wrote to Anne, and Anne wrote back on the 27th of April 1940, which is the earliest of Anne's writings we have. They wrote in English, with Anne's father likely translating the English to Dutch and then back again. Anne wrote about her school, Amsterdam, and her picture card collection, of which she apparently had 800. However, their correspondence was cut short, as the Dutch surrendered to the Nazis just 11 days after Anne wrote her letter to Juanita. No more letters from the Frank family arrived until after the war, when Juanita's older sister, Betty Anne, who had written her own letter to Margot Frank five years earlier, wrote another letter to the Frank's family address. She received a long handwritten letter from Otto Frank, explaining that both Margot and Anne had died in a concentration camp. Betty Ann was a teacher herself by that point, and she took the letter into school to read to her students, hoping to make them realise how fortunate they were not to have been in Europe during the war. Finally, in June 1941, there was a wedding in Amsterdam. After filming some of the guests, the cameraman points his camera upwards at the onlookers and surrounding buildings. In doing so, they gave us the only video footage we have of Anne Frank, watching from a nearby building. A year later, she would receive the book which would become her diary, and three years after that, she would be dead. But not before giving the world one of the most important historical documents ever written. As always, you can find links to more information below the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and a big shout out to my patrons who help me make better content. If you want to see videos earlier and join our Patreon Discord server, then check out my Patreon link in the description below. I'll see you next time.